have been discussing uh, memories uh, and the last few classes we discussed the static RAM. So today's class we shall take up the other form of memory which is the dynamic RAM which as you know is uh, very popular nowadays uh, the reason being that you can get very large capacity of memories in a single chip. Okay? So we shall take up uh, what is uh, dynamic RAM, how do you actually realize it and what are the um, properties of such a memory. So the DRAM, the dynamic RAM. Uh, the basic cell of a dynamic RAM as it is uh, nowadays is uh, just what you have is you have a simple pass transistor okay, followed by a capacitance. Okay. So this is the cell. All right. Now, uh, the memory or the, the storage, you know, in memory you basically have a storage, okay. The storage is done in the capacitor, okay. That is, the charge is stored in the capacitor and depending on whether the capacitance is charged or not, you have stored either a 1 or a 0, all right. So, if the capacitance is charged, you say you have stored a 1. If the capacitance is in the discharged condition, you can say a 0 is stored in the memory cell. So basically you can see that it is a very simple structure okay, compared to a static RAM where you had 6 uh, transistors per cell or uh, 4 transistors per cell. Okay. Here you just have one single transistor. So the area occupied by the cell should be much smaller okay, with the result that uh, you can have a larger capacity of memory. Of course there is a capacitor here one has to remember that and you, uh, we know that uh, actually in integrated circuit or in the uh, integrated circuits okay the capacitor usually takes up a lot of area okay so that is the problem now but nowadays uh, with the development of technology you know that uh, uh, you have what is called trench capacitors okay that is basically you dig a trench in the semiconductor like this okay and then you grow a thin oxide, all right, a thin oxide, all right, and then you fill it up with again some different materials, say polysilicon, okay, all right. So this oxide here, okay, uh, the, the, this uh, capacitance here, the oxide is the insulator, okay, uh, and on two sides you have. Um, uh, silicon. So basically this forms a capacitance and here b the surface area taken up by the capacitance is not large although you have a large area because of the very nature of the capacitance which is in the form of a trench. Okay. So you are actually not taking up a lot of area. In fact in modern uh, IC technology you have the transistor, this single transistor and the capacitance integrated in the sense that the capacitance actually sits on the top of the, um, the transistor actually sits on the top of the capacitor. Okay? So basically the area requirement is very quite small. Okay? So what, it, what you do is basically here you have a, a select line. Okay? So this is the word select. Okay? You can say and this is the data line. All right. So when you select this word, okay, that when this capacitance, uh, when this word select line goes high, this transistor, which is nothing but a pass transistor, this turns on, and the capacitance is connected to the data line. Okay, and the capacitance uh, and whatever, if it is 
Uh, it is basically connected to the data line and on the data line you have the information corresponding to the voltage across the capacitance. All right? So that is how you read that capacitance. Okay? That is, you, of course, you have a large number of such cells and again, ju just in the same way as we have already discussed for other memories, that you have an array. Okay? And uh, so on this particular line, okay, you will have different cells located. Okay? So once you energize this word select, okay, all, the, uh, all, the cell, all the cells on this word line is going to be selected. And then you, again, you have so many columns. And then you have to again select one of these, all these columns. Okay? And that is how you particularly zero in on one cell in the particular array. Okay. Now, but so this is how you actually use a dynamic uh, RAM. Now, why is it called a dynamic RAM? It is called a dynamic RAM because the mechanism of st stored charge here is, uh, mechanism of uh, information storage here is charge stored across the capacitance. And when charge is stored across the capacitance, there will always be some leakage paths. Okay. For example, here you, you have an MOS transistor here, so you have the uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the junction here, that is the source to the substrate junction of this MOS transistor. Okay? So this can be a leakage path. All right? And you also have other leakage paths, okay? which will result in the, uh, what will happen is slowly the uh, information stored in, across the capacitance is going to degrade with time. Okay? And with the result that if, uh, if you wait for a long time, okay, after you have written into it to read from the cell, okay, the information may have leaked away. So that is, if you have charged this capacitance, so slowly this charge will, uh, will uh, leak off. Okay? And if after a long time, okay, this, uh, you have lost enough charge so that what is going to happen is you may read a, a zero instead of the one which was stored here. So that is the dynamic nature. So basically what you have to do is, if you have stored a one, you have to refresh the memory from time to time. That is one drawback of a dynamic RAM compared to a static RAM, that because of the dynamic nature of the storage, okay, you have to refresh the memory from time to time. All right? So that is one. The other problem is, th because we want this cell to be small, it, it must take up a small area, okay, this capacitance, okay, again, must necessarily be of a small value. You cannot have a very large capacitance. Although you are making a trench capacitance, okay, you cannot have a very large value of capacitance. Okay? Whereas this data line capacitance is going to be a very large capacitance. Okay? Because you have on this, sitting on this data line a large number of such cells. Okay? So this data line capacitance is going to be very large. Okay? So what you do is basically if you think of the mechanism that what you are doing is suppose you initially charge the data line to some, some value, say VD. VD is the initial data line voltage, say. Okay? And then what you do is you select a particular cell. Okay? So now suppose we say that this data line voltage is equal to VDD by 2, say, all right? Uh, uh, that is, if you are operating from a 5 volt power supply, this is 2.5 volts. And then when this capacitance is charged, it was 5 volts, say. The voltage across the capacitance is 5 volts. If it is discharged, it is 0 volts. So when it is connected to the data line, if it is fully charged, it is going to increase the data line voltage. And if it was 0 volts, it is going to pull down the data line voltage. Okay? Now, let us just do a small calculation and see what is going to be the change in the data line voltage. Now, this VD, we can say, is equal to QD by CD, okay? where QD is the total charge, data line charge, we can say, and CD is the data line capacitance. Okay? Similarly, if we say that VC is the initial cell voltage or that is basically the capacitance uh, voltage okay so that is equal to qc by cc 
okay that is the total charge across the in the across the capacitance okay and cc is the the cell capacitance okay that is basically the capacitance here all right now so what is going to be the final voltage when you in, uh, when you connect the two when the cell is selected it is going to be the total charge by the total capacitance okay so if you just do an, an uh, so this is the final capacitance uh, final voltage okay that is basically when you uh, connect them you will have a common voltage across the capacitance and the data line because this is basically if you connect uh, consider this transistor to be a short okay there will be a common voltage across the capacitance and the data line so this is the final voltage the common voltage so the delta vd or the change in the data line voltage is equal to okay we can say is equal to vd minus vf okay this is equal to what is vd qd by cd minus qd plus qc by cd plus cc all right so this we can simplify like this okay you can write is equal to just uh, qd into uh, uh, if you uh, cd plus cc minus cd qd plus qc divided by cd into cd plus cc okay now if you do further analysis okay uh, if you for example if you divide by cd uh, then you get is equal to i'm writing it here qd into 1 plus cc plus cd minus qd by qc cd plus cc okay now qd and qd will cancel here okay and what you are left with is uh, qd by cd okay into cc okay qd by cd is vd all right and this is qc okay which is nothing but cc into vc okay so you can take cc common here okay uh, so you get uh, qd by cd is vd minus and here you get vc cd plus cc okay so what you get is vd is the initial data line voltage so this is the difference the change in the data line voltage after you have connected after the data line after the cell is connected to the data line okay so vd and vc vd minus vc is the difference initial difference between the data line voltage and the cell voltage okay into this cc by cd plus cc all right now the cell capacitance is usually much smaller compared to the data line capacitance okay some typical value would be for example cc would be cc would be of the order of say 40 femtofarad whereas cd would be of the order of say 1 picofarad all right so if you take that values okay so and this vd minus vc okay suppose you have initially charged the data line to say uh, 2.5 volts all right and say so basically vd minus vc so if vc is say 5 volts or 0 volts the difference vd minus vc is uh, 2.5 volts so basically what you have is cc by cd plus cc uh, cc is much smaller than cd so this is 40 by 1 pf is around uh, 1 25th okay so this delta vd in under such situation will be almost about 100 millivolts okay so what is the situation 
initially what you have done is you have charged this to 2.5 volt VDD by 2 okay and then you have connected the cell okay irrespective of whether the 0 is stored here or a 1 is stored here okay the cell the data line voltage is going to be VDD by 2 plus minus 100 millivolts okay if this was a 0 is stored here it becomes VDD by 2 that is 2.5 it changes to 2.4 volts if uh, five, five, uh, it, it was charged to 5 volts it would just go up to 2.6 volts okay so you have to detect that very small difference all right so it is very difficult and the other thing is since your this cell is connected to this data line okay the cell voltage also becomes the same okay so whatever is stored in the cell is lost okay initially whatever you had stored okay whether a zero was stored or a one was stored now after you have read from the cell it is it is no longer there because it the voltage has become the same as the data line voltage so irrespective of zero or one it has now become very close to 2.5 volts so these are the problems okay that is the data line voltage change is very small and number two while reading the memory the contents of the memory is lost okay all right so how do you overcome these two problems so any reading mechanism must be able to overcome these problems okay so the way to do it is basically again uh, when you are reading from the memory okay you have to uh, have a again a mechanism like you are uh, uh, you are detecting not the absolute value of the voltage but a differential voltage okay that is whether it goes from uh, whether it's increasing above 2.5 or going below 2.5 okay so a, a, a mechanism of that sort okay a differential voltage and also you have to ensure that while you are reading you also refresh the memory or you basically what this called is you rewrite into the memory okay that it is also that is also necessary because the reading mechanism must not spoil the whatever is con contained in the memory okay so uh, we, just, we shall just take up uh, uh, a DRAM circuit which will do this okay so basically you can uh, consider it like this you have what is a pre-charge mechanism and then you have uh, memory cells large number of memory cells like this okay uh, this is these are connected to the word lines what I am drawing is just a column in the memory okay so you have a sense amplifier okay the sense amplifier is nothing but again what you have is uh, the back to back uh, inverters okay uh, in the flip flop con configuration okay that is uh, the output of one uh, inverter feed, uh, going as the input to the other inverter okay so that is the this is basically the sense amplifier okay then you have a sense in input here so this is VDD say okay then you have a control to connect the data line to this sense amplifier okay call this FF okay FF stands for flip flop and then again you have another set of such uh, cells okay All right. So this is say, and these are the another set of word lines. All 
Okay, so this is another pre-charge voltage Vp and this is the pre-charge signal. So this is the pre-charge signal. Okay, and then what you have is you have this is the sense input here and then you will have a, a sort of column this is column select signal okay i just put cs here okay here also So this point is to be connected to the, there is a column line here, okay. This is the, so this point is connected to this line and this is the another column select, okay. Okay. Now, so basically what you have is, I will just explain again. So this is one column of the memory, okay. This is one column of the memory okay and uh, this these are the word lines so suppose you have a 128 cells in a column okay so you will have what you are doing is you are dividing the, the column into two parts okay so 64 cells on top and 64 cells at the bottom okay so you have two halves 64 cells and 64 cells and this cell which you see is just like the cell which we have already seen okay now what happens is first is you precharge these data lines so you have two halves of the data line now the one is the bottom half and the other is the top half so you first precharge this data line say to vdd by 2 okay that is done through this so this is the precharge voltage okay the, when the precharge signal comes both the data lines are precharged to vdd by 2 okay then what happens is this sense of all these other signals, okay, the sense is off initially and all this FF is also off and the CS, that is the column select is also off, okay. Uh, all right. Now what happens is one of the cell, so either you are selecting a cell in the upper half or in the bottom half, okay. Only one word line can go high. So if you are selecting a cell in the upper half, that means all the cells in the bottom half are not selected, okay. So say suppose you have charged to 2.5 volts, this data line voltage of the bottom half is going to remain at 2.5 volts. Now if you have, uh, but in the upper half, if a 1 is stored in that memory cell, okay, this uh, upper half data line voltage is going to go up by say 100 millivolts as we have seen, okay. So it is going to go up to 2.6 volts, okay. So the upper line data line, upper half data line voltage and the lower half data line voltage, there is going to be a difference, okay. If a 0 was stored, this may go down by 100 millivolts to 2.4 volts, okay. Now then what you do is you energize this flip-flop, okay. Now these two pass transistors, there are two pass transistors here, okay. They connect the data lines to this sense amplifier, okay. These, these are pass transistors, okay. So what you do is first you select the cell, let the differential voltage develop, okay. And then you connect the, uh, the data line to the sense amplifier as well as you energize the sense amplifier by making this transistor go high, okay. As long as this sense input is low, okay there is no current flowing so this sense amplifier is not is, is not operational it is in a uh, you know there is no current flowing all right so only when this transistor turns on okay th then the sense amplifier is activated and then depending on the difference in voltage okay at these two points okay this sense amplifier is going to what happen, what, what is going to happen? The sense, the, uh, the sense amplifier output is going to go to one of the two stable states, 
okay so if the upper half voltage is higher okay the upper line is going to be pulled up all the way to 5 volts and the lower voltage is going to go down all the way to 0 volts okay because in that part of the characteristics okay it's an inverter uh, the, because the gain is very high and they are connected in with uh, with positive feedback okay so it is going to um, pull up one side to vdd and the other side is going to be pulled down to zero okay so and and in the same process what you are doing is since say suppose you had selected one cell in the upper half okay it had gone to by up the upper line voltage had gone up by 100 millivolts okay now this line is going up to 5 volts and basically what you are doing is you are rewriting into that particular cell so that cell itself is being written back into to 5 volts okay now if this side had gone down by 100 millivolts so 2.4 volts what is going to happen is this half the lower half is going to go up to 5 volts the upper half is going to go to zero so basically you are writing back into the cell you are writing a zero back into the that particular cell the lower half no cell is selected so it is not going to affect the contents of any cell in the lower half all right so what you are doing is basically you are by the sense amplifier it is doing two functions okay one is it is that it is magnifying that small difference in voltage so it is you are going to have 5 volts on one side and 0 volt on the other side okay it's amplifying the difference and also it is rewriting okay into that particular cell okay which was the uh, which uh, the voltage of which was affected during the reading mechanism all right and then you do the next thing okay once you have developed that 5 volts uh, and 0 volt difference okay there are two transistors here so this is one column line okay this line there are two lines here okay so you have a number of columns situated like this and all the so this is one particular column okay you have so many similar columns okay with each with a sense amplifier all right and then what you do is this is a column select okay so all of this uh, columns will have the input here okay so basically you are selecting uh, again you have a decoder and the output of the decoder is going to go to this column select so basically you select one of the so many columns okay and only one column is going to be output is going to be connected to this uh, output line okay so this is a pass transistor again so what this does is it connects the output of the flip flop okay or the sense amplifier to the column line okay so then uh, once you have developed that extra uh, that large voltage difference you connect it to the uh, you, uh, you you choose one particular column okay through the y decoder and then that is connected to the output lines okay so basically one has to be careful in that there has to be a proper sequencing of all this okay first you select the particular cell in a column okay let the difference small difference develop okay then only you energize the sense amplifier you should not do that before because if you energize the sense amplifier before what is going to happen is it is going to go to one of the two stable states okay and then once it goes to one of the two stable states okay uh, a small voltage difference of 100 millivolts is not going to affect that stable state okay so it's be, uh, first you have to develop that small difference okay all right and then you have to uh, uh, energize the sense amplifier okay and then once you have that uh, once you have energized the sense amplifier the two uh, voltage levels are developed that is 5 volts and 0 volts then only you do uh, choose the particular column okay uh, you don't uh, choose the column beforehand because if the the, the column uh, capacitance if you choose it beforehand the column is connected to the data line and also the column capacitance will come into picture all right okay which is again going to affect the differential voltage okay so once you uh, developed that 5 volts okay to 0 volt then only you connect that uh, particular column to this uh, uh, to this output line because this line also has a large capacitance because all the columns 
are sitting on that line. Okay? So that actually, because you require a definite sequencing of operations, it makes the dynamic RAM uh, comparatively slower compared to the uh, static RAM. Okay? So this is how uh, you operate a dynamic RAM. Okay? As we said, the dynamic RAM, the problem is you require to uh, uh, refresh the memory from time to time. Okay? So obviously, if you read from a particular row, say suppose you have energized this particular first row, say row 0, okay, what is happening is you are in all the columns, okay, the row 0 is energized, okay, and the row 0 value is actually read by the sense amplifier okay, in all the columns. Okay, and uh, 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 and the sense amplifier actually refreshes that memory location. Okay? But it may happen that you know that uh, uh, when you are reading, okay, you may not have read a particular row for a long time. Okay? So that cell, okay, the, all the cells in that particular row, if it was charged to 5 volts, it, the charges may go down. Okay? And so you actually have lost that whatever was stored in that memory. So you, what you have to do is deliberately you have to refresh the memory location. So how do you do that? You, uh, the way to refresh a memory is by reading that memory. Okay, once you read a particular cell, you actually refresh that particular cell. So what you have to do is you have to deliberately read every cell okay, after a, some interval of time. Okay? And in that process, you basically refresh that particular memory cell. Okay, so uh, in fact, what you do is uh, once you say you read, uh, uh, that means you have to energize sequentially all the rows one after another. Okay, once you do that, okay, once you energize say row zero, you are on all the columns you are actually refreshing uh, that uh, particular cell corresponding to row zero in each of the columns. So if you have a square array of n bits, say. Okay, so you have root n times uh, number of cells in each column, and you have root n times uh, root n number of columns. So basically, you require root n refresh cycles to uh, refresh all the memory locations. All right. So basically, you have to read each row. Okay, energize each row. Okay, so all the cells are refreshed. Okay. So that is how you refresh the memory, just by reading mechanism. All right? So this is uh, the configuration for a dynamic RAM, okay? uh, a normal MOS type dynamic RAM. We shall now just take up another example of a dynamic RAM, where, which uses uh, the bi-CMOS concept, okay? that is using bipolar transistors. Okay? Now, obviously, the reason uh, to use bipolar transistors is to speed up operation. Okay? I shall just um, give a reference, and we shall take up the structure they have used, okay? and just see how it actually improves the operation. So it's, it's Kitsukawa and others, okay? IEEE, again, the same journal, Journal of Solid State Circuits, um, volume 25, number 5, pages 1102 to 1111, October 1990. Okay? All right. Uh, so Kitsukawa and others. IEEE Journal of Solid State Circuits, volume 25, number 5, pages 11, 1102 to 1111, October 1990. So that is the reference. I'll just, this is a um, uh, different way of sensing. I'll just give you how they do it. Okay. So what they have is, again, the cell is quite similar. Okay. You have a transistor and a capacitance, okay, and then so this is the cell, okay, one particular cell. So 
again I'll draw the column al although it is a column no you are drawing it like this okay uh, so what you have is each column will have a sense amplifier again the sense amplifier is the same sense amplifier you have the CMOS sense amplifier that is two CMOS ampli uh, inverters okay the output of one going in as input to the other okay and this outputs are connected here all right so this is the sense amplifier then so this is called the cmos or sense amplifier as well as the rewrite amplifier okay basically it does two functions it re uh, senses what is the voltage in the cell and at the same time rewrites back into the particular cell then you have a precharge circuit okay so okay so this is the precharge circuit so precharge circuit the function is to precharge the the two lines the bit lines okay so this is the precharge voltage 5p okay so these are two mos transistors okay so when 5p is high these two transistors turn on okay and whatever is vp is passed on to these two lines there is another transistor which is basically again connected across the lines and when this is on it is there the extra transistor is there to equalize the voltages between the two lines okay just as acting as a sort of uh, connection between the two lines so that it ensures that the two line voltages are the same then you have uh, the mechanism for reading okay you have two transistors here okay all right so these two lines carry the output of each column okay so this is the y select line y select okay then you have two more lines this is for the writing mechanism so you have uh, two transistors sitting here one is connected here the other is connected here so this is energized only when you want to write into this cell so this is a write okay so this is the and function of this and this okay all right then you have the amplifier which is used to amplify the signals write signals so you have the basic structure is like this you have two bipolar transistors okay this is a constant base voltage here and then these two lines are connected to the emitters of the two transistors okay this is a VDD. So these two go to the main amplifier. Okay, now this is the circuit I will explain. Okay, 
So this is as I said this is a particular column. Okay, this is a particular column. So you have so many number uh, columns all sitting on this set of lines. Okay, so you have all the columns connected to this set of lines, and in each column, okay, on this column you have a number of such cells. Okay, I've just shown one cell, but you are going to have a number of such cell, uh, such cells. Okay, all right. So what you do is, so this is the word line which selects. A particular cell. Suppose you select this particular cell. Okay. So what happens is, if you select this cell, uh, this particular voltage on this line is going to get affected. Okay. This part of the bit line. So previously, again, just like um, uh, the previous circuit which we have discussed, we the line voltages are precharged to a particular value with this help of this precharge circuit. So this precharge circuit, okay, using these three transistors, the precharges the two bit lines, okay, to a common voltage, say VDD by two, okay. Now you select a particular cell on this column, okay, and what is going to happen? This upper line on this column is going to get voltage is going to get affected. So again, as we have seen, this voltage difference is going to be pretty small. Okay, small voltage difference. So this line voltage may go up by 100 millivolts or go down by 100 millivolts, but it creates a difference between the two uh, between the two bit lines. Then what you have to do is you have to energize this sense amplifier. So basically, you have the two signals here, phi s and phi s prime, okay, connected to this sense amplifier. Obviously, if phi s is high and phi s prime is low okay then only the sense amplifier is going to get activated if it's the other way around okay then it is not going to get activated okay it's not operational okay so once it gets activated okay so after you uh, after this uh, it creates a differential voltage small differential voltage the sense amplifier is activated which creates a large difference in voltage between the two lines okay and then what happens is so this line voltages are different. Now we come to this part here. Okay. So this, what is the structure here is the you have two transistors here. Okay. The gate of these two transistors are connected to the bit lines. So what is going to happen is on one of the transistors, the gate voltage is going to be very small, less than the threshold voltage. The other transistors, the gate voltage is going to be very high. Okay. Then you have these two transistors. These two transistors act nothing just like past transistors. Okay. The y is connected here. So it basically selects a particular column. So this is a column okay, sitting on these two lines. Okay. So you have different number of columns. So only one of the columns is connected to this particular line. Okay. Suppose this column is selected. What is going to happen is one of the one of, since one of the transistors is selected, Okay. So what is going to happen is, see a current is going to flow in one of these two lines. Okay. Uh, sorry. The, um, so it is a drain current, so it is going to flow the other way. Okay. So here, so these, these are current sources, these are very small current sources, so 50 microampere current sources. Okay. Now the emitter current of this transistor, okay, is what is it equal to? It is equal to this 50 microampere plus the current flowing on that line. So you have two transistors here, okay, who has a which has a common base voltage. The base voltage is the same, Vb, okay, which means that the emitter voltage is almost constant. You see, for a bipolar transistor, even with large change in current, okay, the base to emitter voltage difference is very small. Okay. So what is going to happen is suppose uh, one of these lines is going to, uh, uh, is going to carry current. Okay. So one of the, for one of the bipolar transistors, the current is going to be 50 microamperes. For the other uh, bipolar transistors, it is going to be 50 microampere plus the current which is drawn by the MOS transistor, which is as, which may be as large as about 1 milliampere. Okay, so it is 50 microampere and 1 milliampere. So that is the emitter current of this bipolar transistor. 
So the emitter current is almost equal to the collector current. This is the resistance here. Okay. So uh, the one of these, uh, the drop across one of the resistances is going to be very large. The other drop is going to be very small. So you get a differential uh, voltage here. Okay. And this differential voltage is fed to a main amplifier, which is another, you know, bipolar uh, differential amplifier, which is similar to the structure which we have seen in the case of a static ram. Okay, so this is how you detect these voltages. Now, what is the advantage of using a bipolar transistor here? The advantage here is that uh, although you get a large voltage difference at the output, you see, the, on this. Uh, on this line, which um, across which all the uh, all the uh, columns are connected, okay, the voltage is going to change by a very small amount. Okay, see this capacitance of this line, okay, is going to be very large because so many columns are sitting on these lines. Okay, it is going to be very large capacitance. Okay, in fact, for this particular circuit, it was uh, about a picofarad capacitance. Okay. Now this capacitance, uh, if you have to charge it through a large voltage, it would take some time. Okay? But here, since the emitter voltage of the bipolar transistor is held almost constant, okay, what you are sensing is basically a current. Okay? And so this line voltage, the voltage across this line is almost a constant. It is not changing. Okay? All right? So the delay is going to be much less. Okay? If it was if, if it was a voltage which you are sensing, okay. Then what would have happened is that voltage had to go all the way. It had to change from zero to five volts. Say, then it would take a long time because the line capacitance had to be charged through that voltage. Okay. So here, although you get a large change in voltage at the output, you see across this line, the voltage change is minimal. Okay. It is the VB whatever is the VB of this voltage which is uh, of this transistor that is changing. That is very small. So. Uh, because of that, okay, it is going to be a much faster mechanism. All right. So uh, by this way, you can sense the uh, what is stored in that memory cell. So that is how you incorporate a bipolar transistor, okay, to uh, improve the speed of the dynamic RAM. Also here, this part of the circuit is, of course, to write into that cell. So if you select Y and you select W, that is right, okay, whatever is on these lines, okay, goes into the data line, okay, and you can write into that memory cell. So this is the circuit for a dynamic RAM, okay, so uh, with a bipolar transistors. The idea is still the sa almost the same. Uh, again, you have to use a differential voltage. You cannot sense the actual voltage in the dynamic RAM directly because once you connect it to the bit line, okay, it creates a very marginal change in the bit line voltages. So you have to compare it with another voltage. The difference in the two voltages are sensed. You require a sense amplifier to sense that difference in voltage okay, at the same time to rewrite into the particular cell. Okay, and here the difference is just a difference in mechanism uh, in the reading mechanism. Okay, here you use a bipolar transistor to uh, sense the uh, the uh, the bit line voltages. Once you have created that big difference in the two bit line voltages, the bipolar uh, uh, transistor advantage is with a small you can have a large difference in current. Okay, having uh, uh, even in that case, the VBE difference is going to be minimal. Okay? So this, uh, you can actually sense the current rather than the voltage. Okay? And the line voltage changes by a very small amount on this line, okay? which is going to make it much faster. Okay? So that is how you can, uh, with the help of a bipolar transistor, you can improve the speed of operation in a dynamic RAM. Okay, so with that, uh, we uh, conclude this discussion on dynamic RAMs.